Welcome to this week's EMBN show, and we've got a pack show coming up this week. You might notice that I'm joined by Doddy this week instead of Steve, because Steve's out and about checking out the latest Specialized bikes. Yeah, he certainly is, and we're going to be seeing where you lot have all been riding in Out and About, and we're going to see who gets a super nice in Bike Vault. Right, kicking it off, it's over to Steve to see what these new Specialized bikes are all about. And yes, we are in a shop. We're in the Satini Specialized Concept Store in Bristol in the southwest of England. Well, today we're gonna to be looking at some of the 2021 Specialized e-mountain bikes, along with some uh, tires and product as well. Uh, I just wanna point out as well that uh, we are in a closed off part of the shop. So uh, later on when I get involved in some of the e-bikes, I might be wearing my face mask. So uh, come and join us for a look around a proper mountain bike store. I just love coming to mountain bike shops. Uh, I'm looking up here and there's a specialized enduro. I think it's a 2004, 2005 vintage. Now, that was the first uh, mountain bike to use the Fox 36 fork, the 150 mil travel, 36 mil stanchion bike. It really was a bike which changed the whole uh, way we ride mountain bikes. It became a mountain bike, a, an enduro bike, which actually could ride and race competitively at downhill. And next of it is actually one of the older enduro bikes. And you can see how the whole uh, chassis dimension did change in only a couple of years. Skinnier fork, skinnier frame, skinnier tires. It took the mountain bike from a cross country bike into a proper enduro bike. So we're now walking into the Turbo Levo part of the store. I'm sure there's some goodies around here. Oh, wow, crikey, look, there is actually up here. So I can't believe it. It's only five years ago that Specialized launched the first ever Turbo Levo 6 Fatty. It had, I think it had a three inch tire on the front and a 2.8 inch tire on the back. Now, in many ways, like the Enduro changed the way mountain bikes were back in 2005, the first uh, Turbo Levo 6 Fatty did actually uh, mark a big change in how e-mountain bikes looked. Uh, all of a sudden, you had an internal battery, you had aggressive geometry. It really was a moment in time. Uh, big news from Specialized this week, actually, and they've come out with some new compounds across the range of their tires. They've now got a T7 and a T9. Now, on this stump jumper, this is a Stumpy Evo 2021, ridiculously lightweight. Um, we've got an eliminator on the back and a butcher up front. Now, the butcher is a tire that I'm really familiar with, and this comes in 27.5 or 29, uh, in 2.3 or 2.6. Uh, and I love the graphic on the side of the tires. Plus, of course, that, that iconic sawtooth profile of the, of the tread pattern. And the compound on this tire is ridiculously soft. I bet it would make an amazing e-bike tire. But look, the main reason that we're in this concept store, Satini in uh, North Bristol, is to look at the bling. Now, I haven't got my stick today, but I do have my pen. What do you think, guys, about gold chains and cassettes? Mm. And yeah, here is the 2021 um, S-Works Levo. What do you think about that red? I think it's absolutely awesome. Look at it, oh, crikey. You know, as much as componentry and geometry does matter, the look of the bike is essential. I'm moving across now to the 2021 um, Levo SL. Now this is an S-Works as well. The big difference this year on the Levo bikes is that they've swapped out to Fox 36 forks and 160 mil travel up front. So uh, yeah, that really does uh, alter the character of both Levo and the Levo SL quite considerably. Now the great news is it's not all crazy expensive e-mountain bikes in the shop. Uh, let me introduce you to the Turbo Levo, 4,500 pounds, comes in three colors. I really like this clay version, but it also comes in a kind of New York taxi color. It has not got a Fox 36 fork on it, it's got a RockShox, it's a 35 on there, so it's one millimeter difference, but still 160 mil travel. Uh, in terms of braking, there's a 220 mil rotor up front and a 200 mil on the back. It's a guide RE brake in there, which means it's got a code caliper. Uh, it's got a seat dropper on it. It's pretty much exactly the same geometry as the S-Works bike. But like I said, 4,500 pounds. Certainly a bike to look at. Uh, oh, sorry, Josh. Uh, yeah, 
so easy to get distracted in, uh, in bike shops. And you know what? Oh, I tell you, looks still matter, don't they? Now join us on the channel over the next few days and we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at all the 2021 e-mounted bikes from the Levo SL to the Levo and also the Kinevo. Uh, so over now to Chris and Doddy in the studio. I'm gonna go and charge my battery over a coffee. Wow, these bikes look amazing, Doddy, don't they? I cannot wait to get my hands on one of those. Oh, you have to join the queue, mate. I've been waiting flipping <laughs> ages for my new bike, haven't I, Steve Jones? <laughs> mm. Well, anyway, we've got some awesome stuff in the shop at the moment. So if you've seen it, we've got our limited edition adventure wear. There's loads of cool stuff, there's mm -hmm. stickers and all sorts. So uh, please do support us and you'll look cool as well. Okay, so straight into comments and stuff from various videos we've had over the week. So in particular to the EMBA show 146 last week. Mm -hmm. uh, loads of love from you guys. This is really cool too. It's great to see you back, by the way. It is nice and big. I haven't even said it yet. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, so Plastic Monkey says, nice to see Chris safe uh, and had a quick recovery. Yeah, Cheers. completely, man. And also Definitely. from uh, Ian Young, welcome back, Chris. I'm glad you're getting better. Yeah, definitely feeling loads better. And thank you for all your comments and replies to those videos. Feeling a lot, a lot of love coming from you guys. So much appreciated. And yeah, back on it. Been riding pretty much every lunch hour this week. So getting out there, shredding again on the e-bikes. So it won't be long before back up to full speed. It's hard to believe you've even been away, to be honest. I saw that first <laughs> video where you said, I feel a bit rusty. It's just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> got going hard, Doddy. Got going hard. That's what it's about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another few comments here as well from uh, uh, how much travel do you actually need on an e-mountain bike? Uh, so Terry Smith is saying, comfort is key for me. The more comfort equals more riding. 180 mil travel and a suspension seat post. Suspension seat with gel and anything else NASA can throw at it. Wow. Throw at it. All Big the comfort. Fat four inch tires and a throttle when I don't feel like pedaling, which is frequent. <laughs> Maybe comfort gel grips and throw me a spare battery on there to cool my beer. <laughs> sounds like the ultimate setup. It the sounds ultimate like comfort. Neil's ideal riding buddy. It sounds like he wants yeah. to be riding on a three-piece sofa around the woods. Yeah, or a Harley, what was it, Gold, no, Honda Goldwing. Yeah, that's the one. Pretty much, Honda Goldwing in a mountain bike world. In fact, you should build one. Be cool, A Honda it? Goldwing equivalent. The com most comfortable e-mountain bike ever. Yeah, it's a good idea, that. We've got Moriso T-Rex, T-Rex, With a motor push you up, the more travel, uh, the better. Yeah, and I totally agree with you there. I'm actually out and about on my Kinevo quite regularly riding cross country, and people think, what the hell are you doing? It's got a big box of triple clamp forks on there, coil shock on the rear, I think it's got the Asagai tires on it, so it is absolute sort of downhill, food downhill ride. Bike. Yeah, basically. But that bike is so comfortable cross country, the geometry and a nice upright riding position, big wide bars, it's the ultimate bike for, you know, you can get out there all day. Do you know what? It. I'm gonna be devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. I'd go the other way. Really? Yeah, even though I don't currently have a bike, yeah. Steve Jones, um, I actually like to feel connected to the trail. Really? Don't get me wrong, I don't wanna feel uncomfortable, yeah. and I agree with, you know, more travel is mm -hmm. more comfortable and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But especially with an e-bike now, I like to feel my traction. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's a good you know, point. I, and I ride them less than you guys yeah. do. I go between regular mm -hmm. bikes and e-bikes. Yeah. And I find sometimes when I get back on the e-bike, not quite being able to feel that terrain because mm -hmm. the tyres are so grippy now yeah. and the suspension is so good. Yeah. I'll end up wheel spinning sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm not a good tuned point. in. Yeah, yeah, a valid point, yeah, for sure. I've um, got one last one, it says from, this is from Zajika. 200 mil travel, low Ooh. slack with a 61 degree head tube angle. <laughs> that that's like, that's, that is the down of one. <laughs> 61 degree head angle. But wow. keep all those comments coming in, love seeing what you guys think about the videos. Okay, now it's time for Tech of the Week, and this one is about as tech as you get, to be fair. So this is from Sander in San Francisco. Hey, Sander. And he's got a Cannondale Moterra Neo 2. Mm -hmm. Now, Sander says, I've been riding and racing custom two-stroke motorbikes, I think there's a shot actually here, yeah. um, for six years now. And I've decided to build my first e-bike, a 4,300 watt full suspension mid-drive EMTB. That's not a mountain bike. That's, that's, just, that's basically a motorbike, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in the middle of the build, sorry, I just realised that so many people actually say that, I don't really mean it. Um, I've never actually ridden an EMTB, so I rented one at the local shop in San Francisco whilst visiting family. What an amazing experience. I'll never build another gas powered bike again. Hey, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, oh, just a little cool thing you might want to check out if you're not already aware of it. There's a thing called The Long Way Up. It's Ewan McGregor and his friend Charlie Bullman, and they're basically traveling from the tip of South America all the way up to LA, I think they're going to finish at. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it on e-motorbikes. Okay. And they're basically, they're prototype Harley-Davidson e-motorbikes, and even the support crew are using those Rivian mm -hmm. um, e 
vehicles, and I think they're prototypes as well. Really? So and this was electric. so early on right. that I had to get Rivian to put in charging points on the way. Really? Super cool, just yeah. if nothing else about e-technology, definitely worth a watch. That's crazy, isn't it? I'm just looking at something else that's crazy. Is that picture of Sander on his two-stroke motorized push bike here, and he's got a massive, like a motocross exhaust on there and full leathers as well, full face helmet. It like looks super pretty full on, it? doesn't it? It looks yeah. a load of fun as well, but yeah, I don't blame you for switching to the e-power there. It looks great. It's the future for sure. Right, it's time for Out and About, and it's the part of the show where we get to see where you guys have been riding on your e-mountain bikes all over the world. And let's kick it off. Got a really nice picture here. I thought it was an endo or stop it at first, but I think it's just riding. And this is Christoph. Steep old terrain, yeah. It is, an amazing shot. So this is Christoph on his Scott Genius E-Ride 900, and he's out on Corsica. Wow. So this is a trail of Corsica with a C just off, you know, dropping off to my side as well. So it looks oh, like an amazing beautiful. trail. Have you ridden on Corsica, Doddy? No, I haven't. I've never been there. I'd love to. I've done what one. part I, of the world? Yeah, wow. I did one competition out there, Red Bull District Ride. Oh, yeah. It was out there for one one round, so. Pretty yeah, cool pretty, location yeah. for that. For doing some jumps and skids, anyway. <laughs> uh, next one is from uh, Johnny with his Trek Rail 7, and mm -hmm. this one is in Georgia. Um, a waterfall break whilst riding the Pinhotti Trails in the Cahuta, Cahuta uh, Wilderness in Georgia. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, a great that's a pretty beautiful it? place for a stop on mid ride, isn't it? Yeah, I think anywhere with a waterfall and trails. We'll be tempted yeah. to jump in. Exactly, it looks mm. amazing. Well, we've got this moody shot here. Oh. So this is a bit of mist in the woods yeah. here, and this is from Hugo Manuel. He's got a Mondrake Level RR in the Serra de Sintra. And this is the break before the ride. And I think I've ridden those trails with Steve Jones. It kind of looks familiar. Territory, those rocks and that mist, and yeah. I love that mist, that's mm, super cool, isn't moody, it? isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That bike looks so good as well. Yeah. A few mods going on with that as well. Uh, nice. Next one's from Gareth in um, good old fashioned South Wales in the UK, Ponskill. Um, evening ride, out and about on rides, really struggling to uh, complete on an, an analog bike due to old injuries. E biking has given me a new lease of life. Uh, well, that's exactly what it's all about, mm -hmm. isn't it, Gareth? Yeah, um, spot on. And look at that like sunset there. And you can see, well, well it looks like the Avon masts in the background. I think it Sorry. is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, right in the distance. Not the mast, we're talking about the windmills. Yeah. <laughs> Even that sky is blending in, it's kind of going in with that colour of that bike as well. So that's Beautiful, a nice shot. yeah. Great well, shot as well. Got this one a bit of black and white action. You don't get very many black and white picks here on EMBN, but this one's in from Kurt. He's on a Spectral on uh, CF 7.0. He's out in Belgium, Jenk in Watersh Watershy. Uh, riding one of the Black Mountains or Spoiled Tips in Jenk. So I'm guessing that's kind of like a free ridey kind of zone. It's a spoiled tip and it's a pile built of accumulated spoil. Waste material moved during mining. So, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. These waste materials are typically Composed of shale as well as smaller quantities of carbon, carbonifer carboniferous oh. sandstone and various other residues. Do you know what? So, Jones, Jones will actually be gutted he's not here. I he know, he'd love that wouldn't he? He's a geologist. Yeah. He is, he knows everything he's about not, stones, no, he soils, doesn't. He doesn't know anything. access, anything about <laughs> whales, that, that guy is your man. But yeah. going back to the shot, it looks really good. And I think that's quite similar to one of the sh uh, spots that I ride over here in the UK, which is called the Bings up in Scotland. And that's all the mining sort of residue and big shale tips. Ah, and it's really cool. Some stuff. Yeah, like riding the in the dusty stuff. Keep that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, similar kind of spot. But yeah, rad shot there. Love it. I think that's it for this week. It is. Keep yeah. them coming in. Make sure if you want to get featured on the show, use the upload service. The details of that are up on screen now. Okay, so straight into Bike Vault, which I've got to confess, this is always a favourite mm -hmm. of mine. And the first shot is from Bastion of his Specialised Kinevo 2018. Got a set of Fox 40s on the front, which I think looks wicked. It just feels like it's the right fork for that bike. Yeah. Uh, in Germany, near Nuremberg. Hey, we went to a Red Bull District ride in Nuremberg. Did, yeah, I've been there a few times, actually. Yeah. That was an insane contest, wasn't it? Amazing. Wicked town as well, a really nice the, place. The yeah. crowds as well. I can remember that big town square with the big final jump in. That was something else. But that bike, I think it's got those Specialised rim graphics on there as well, which really set off that down tube super pimp, graphic. Yeah, because the Kinevo can be quite a stealthy looking bike. Mm. I think from the side, mine's pretty matte black and it's a bit sort of stealthy, but I think you really brought it to life with those graphics. Do you know and, what? And I would have given that a super nice, but I've spotted something that I just can't give it a super nice. Oh, I've just noticed it too. Resting the pedal on your helmet on the floor. Ooh, mm. Especially not with a heavy e bike, mate. <laughs> no, you don't want to be doing that, Bastion. Just a nice then. 
Just a nice. Right, so we've got a um, next bike is from Ant. This is a Norco oh. Sight VLT 2020 model. He's out in Sydney in Australia. Been riding mountain bikes for a long time. This is my first e-bike. Love it and love your show. And guess what? I think I love your bike too. I absolutely love it. Mm. That is so modern, it's ridiculous. Look how steep that seat angle is. It's cool, isn't it? Banging for climbing, mm. putting you right on equal weight distribution between those wheels. Pedals nice and flat, got yeah. the tyres logos pretty much lined up, bang on as well. I'd, I'd go in hot with this one. Super nice. Yeah, it's a super nice. All right, so now over to Dennis in Phoenix, Arizona, mm. a 2020 Turbo Levo Comp. Oh man, it's like a beautiful I'm just setting. noticing the, what the bike has stood up on as well, actually, Doddy. That's pretty cool, isn't it? A bit of a cactus just yeah. uh, in the background. I want to know if hand. you get many punches out there from cactuses. Do they leave forms yeah. and stuff on the trails? That's a good question, actually. Mm. Uh, anyone that rides in Arizona or anywhere else that's got loads of cactus, um, have you suffered with that? Have you even crashed into one? Oh, can story? you imagine? Yeah, let us know in those <laughs> comments underneath. But uh, I think it's a nice. Nice. I think it's a nice, this one. Wow. So next up, we've got Mark here. He's got a 2020 high bike or mountain 6.0. He's in San Francisco Bay, uh, riding the awesome San Francisco Bay Area Trail. 100 miles of the best views. And he's 59, year, 59 years old and going strong. That's a great thing, I think, what we see here on EMBN is the age of the riders. Riders that keep going and going. Mm. You know, we have guys on here, I think one of the oldest was getting close to 90, he was like late 80s. But I mean, he's 59, getting out there, and 100 miles of riding, it's insane, That's isn't unreal, it? isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, the, the view's mad. I, I, I've I'm been to San to Francisco Bay a few times, mm. but I can't quite figure out where it is, but I'm definitely going to look it up, because I'll uh, cool, hopefully get out there for Sea Otter next year. Nice. I think that's got to be another super nice. Yeah, I'd go with that. Well. Wow, okay, so this one, I'm going straight in for a double super nice here, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's from Tamara. It's 2020 Trek Rail 7s, times two. Uh, Glenwood Springs in Colorado, showing a new e-friend, my home trail. Isn't that the best thing? You can take any riding friend, mm -hmm. e-bike or not, out yep. to Fitness, your local trail. Age, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, that is a local trail. Kind of pips most people's local trails, to be fair. <laughs> Look at that, one of the homes of mountain biking. Isn't that a double super nice then? Yeah, 100%. Cool. Yeah. Nice one. So moving on, a bit of processing going on Ooh. here, isn't it? I tell you what, from photo point of view alone. Mm, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. So this is Frank. He's got an Orbea M10 2021 model as well. So this is Spanking out me. in Ahom, Ahom Boden in the valley of Carwendel. Car Car yeah. From a fat fantastic ride with my new bike, 80k distance and 2,300 of, uh, meters of climbing on a single battery. Do you know what? I, everything about that I like. Yeah. I like the attention to detail. Yeah. Like the fact that he's bothered to do this processing mm -hmm. on the image. Yeah. I think the bike looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact it's a brand new bike and he's already been out and smoked a massive ride on it. <laughs> Come Big on. ride as well. Come on. That's a super, super nice. nice. Got to be. Whoa. Okay, now over to Stefan in Germany. And this is a Cube Stereo 160 HPC SLT 625 27.5. And a partridge in the pear tree. <laughs> uh, bought my first e-bike and full suspension mountain bike, and I'm loving it. I will definitely upgrade to Access on the other bikes, just waiting for some wireless brakes. Oh, wireless brakes, there's Ooh. a thought. So Access, in case you don't know, this is Fran's wireless transmission. Mm -hmm. Absolutely lightning quick, no cables connecting anything. It's basically working on witchcraft. Incredible technology. And I've got to say, bike's rad. It as is well. not, yeah. Yeah, it's that's real, real nice. Super nice with that one. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Wow. So finishing up on a super nice, but my question for you, Doddy, is the bike of the week. And I think we've had quite a few strong entries mm. this week. I'm just looking back through them just then. I think for me, it's got to be, I'm thinking Dennis with that cactus shot with his Levo comp. Ooh. What are you thinking? It's a pretty strong entry. What, what's your thoughts? Got some strong ones. Do you know week. what? I'm kind of in with your Bayer, I've got to say from Frank. Go on then, Dolly, because you're the guest on this week's show. What are you going for? You go yeah, with your Yeah, go for Frank. Nice yes, Frank. one, Frank. That is awesome. an amazing Bike shot. Bike of the week. And as I say, keep them coming in. Love seeing all those bikes here on the show. Use the upload service. And that is it for this week's show. Let us know down in the comments which, what you think about the 2021 specialised bikes that Steve's checking out. Let us know if you crashed into a cactus <laughs> and what your favourite bike was in the bike vault too. Love hearing from you. Uh, good thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to us here on ENBN and make sure you find and give us a follow on social media too. Cheers for watching. See you later, guys and girls.